This is the norm. Normal? What's that? Well, there's nothing normal in real estate, but the definition of normal is usual, typical, expected, which we know nothing's ever expected. Sure. But we have been sitting in an extreme seller's market, and now we're starting to see things shift into more of a balanced market. So <sighs> I'd like to say normal is more balanced, sure. right? So that's gonna things are gonna change for our buyers and sellers. Yeah. Okay. So we're here to talk to you about the three things that we are seeing with the change in the market, and then also stay tuned for um, if you're questioning whether or not this is the market for you to jump into as a buyer or seller, we're gonna address that as well. So first of all, sellers, right? Yeah. So less days on the market is the number one thing we're seeing because as inventory rises and buyer demand recedes a little bit, their homes aren't selling in 24 hours. Right. What about buyers? It's great news. Um, if you can see a home, get home, put your kids to bed, have some dinner, and then not find out that you <laughs> didn't have a chance to even write your offer, great news. There's a little bit of a sigh of relief. Um, you get a chance to actually digest, talk to your realtor, run some comps, make sure you're feeling comfortable about this purchase because it's so significant to you and your family. Yeah, great. Oh, that feels good, right? Yeah. Um, and one last thing, of course, one thing we're seeing is less bidding wars, right? Yeah. When the supply is so low and the demand is so high, people are willing to overpay for the, the home. Not to mention because the rates were so high or so low, right? Like they were able to overpay and still feel comfortable right, with what the, where the prices were driving. So we're seeing less bidding wars, which is how it should be, right? Mm -hmm. We should be able to understand what the market's doing without so many people competing at, at once for the same inventory. Yeah, and on the buy side, less bidding wars is music to everyone's ears. It's no longer getting priced out. It's no longer appraisal gaps and bidding 10, 20, 30, 50,000 over, worrying if you're gonna lose to a cash offer in a split second mm -hmm. after you put all this work and time in. Um, it just makes things a little bit easier to navigate, feel like you're actually getting some value. Yes. Um, and in some cases, if there's no bidding war, you actually have some leverage and maybe some negotiating power to maybe make right. an offer under list price. Right, exactly, which is which is great. And then the third thing that we're seeing is, you know, um, the terms are, are, are changing a little. So what we say makes a really solid offer, uh, a combination of great price and great terms, right? So buyers were competing against each other like crazy. So their prices were high, their terms were unbeatable. Things like as is, 100% tax proration, um, waiving home inspection, right? Offering to throw in the Jaguar with the offer, right? Like <laughs> some of those things are starting to fall off and we're seeing now home warranties come back into the mix because a home warranty is something that usually a seller pays for to give a home uh, warranty for the buyer, yeah. uh, like an insurance policy. So those things are kind of coming back and not a lot of people are used to that. So that's also a good thing, right? Again, more balance means more of a winner for on both sides. What do yeah. you see for, for the buy side? Yeah. And again, extra comfort. You go under contract and that attorney review period isn't just kind of, you know, let's do the inspection to make sure nothing's catastrophically going on with the house. Yeah. If there are minor repairs and you want to ask the seller to handle things or ask them to offer you a credit. You can definitely do that. We even see it on the lending side where the interest rates are going up, but credits from the seller can be used to buy down an interest rate. And it's okay to say that's what we're wanting this credit for because right. sometimes a $20,000 gap in purchase price could actually be less than the principal and interest yeah. on a monthly basis. So uh, the buyers are yeah. bringing tons of uh, ideas to the, right. the negotiating table now, which yeah. is what it normally is. What it normally is, absolutely. And really when you think about it, right, when you're selling, and buying in the same transaction. You might win on one side and per have perceived to have lost on the other side, sure. but now this is a little bit more of an equal playing field, which is good, yes. which is what we want to see. And um, you know, we're also hearing and reading a lot about the fact that so many people have regrets over the home that they bought and the regret buyers. We don't know what that's going to play out to be like next year, right. but how awful is that? This is the largest financial transaction in most people's lifetimes and to have a regret over what they bought because they felt so pressured just doesn't feel good in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, so. so um, and then, you know, um, so that is always a, a big question. Is now the right time? And so what are we hearing mostly from people that are calling us today in today's market? Yeah, they're curious, you know, where does this, what does this mean for me? I mean, the majority of people are on the sidelines looking at this and reading the news and curious, you know, should I dive in? I'm thinking about the long term for my family and our wealth and how we really grow that. And people always talk about, how real estate can be a big factor in that. So it really is very specific. There's a lot of questions to be asked um, and people like us are where we yeah. usually get asked first. Yes. Um, there's a lot of folks that are involved in that, as you know. Yeah, yeah, and it's not an easy answer. It's not a yes or no um, knee-jerk reaction because the majority of the wealth created in the United States is through real estate, 
right? And we know that. So what we want to make sure is, is, is this the right time for you? So we as agents will put all the pieces of the puzzle together, knowing exactly what your family's goals are, your long-term goals, your short-term goals, and make sure that we're pairing that with what we know of what's happening in the market because we are on the front lines and just making that informed decision. So um, the answer could be yes, it could be no, but certainly if you're moving to Austin in 15 to 18 months or you know only gonna be here for a short period of time, that might change because we know that the real estate market is cyclical mm -hmm. and that if we're prepared to ride out some of those cycles, um, then we're usually in a better shot. But, yeah. um, but what, what we are so excited about is the fact that we know how to handle this market, mm -hmm. then they're done that, and what do we say at Keller Williams? It's a win-win or no deal. There it is. Thanks so much.